The SNL curse is strong with these two. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of the Skeleton Twins. You're my brother. And we're supposed to be there for each other. I'm tired of you acting like you're the healthy one and I'm your special needs oh, kid. I get depressed about my life. So you're not a famous actor? I got news for you. No one's a famous actor. George Clooney is a famous actor. Okay, George Clooney, I guess that's one exception. Let me go 10 years without talking. Well, it's probably not worth talking about now. You have to tell me a secret. I slept with my scuba instructor. Maggie! Wouldn't it be easier just to tell Lance you're not ready to have a kid? What am I gonna do? I told somebody that I was in town. Don't freak out. Hi, Angel! Mother. Wow. Plenty of cast members have left Saturday Night Live, assuming a successful career awaited them on the big screen. And for Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Billy Crystal, Eddie Murphy, Adam Sandler, Will Ferrell, and maybe Jason Sudeikis, it did. But the other 130 plus cast members, not so much. Yes, it seems the ratio of wins to losses with cast members echoes the NBC show's ratio for funny not funny with sketches. But even still, Kristen Wiig looked poised to be a rare SNL success story with Bridesmaids, which was not only a box office smash, but ushered in a new era of female-centric comedies. But while Melissa McCarthy rode Bridesmaids' coattails to movie stardom, and ironically, Emmy-nominated hosting gigs on SNL, Wiig's career resembles one of her comedy sketches. Friends with Kids, Girl Most Likely, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, and Hate Ship Love Ship have all been DOA, both at the box office and with critics. Her small role in Anchorman 2 and voicing Lucy in Despicable Me 2, along with some bridesmaids residue, are all that's keeping her career alive. And Bill Hader doesn't even have a bridesmaids. His one big movie post SNL, The To-Do List, which his wife wrote and directed, was also DOA, and he really hasn't been doing much else. Thankfully, he has a supporting role in upcoming Oscar bait flick The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, and he does voice Flint Lockwood in Sony's Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs franchise. Plus, he's apparently been adopted by Pixar as a voice characters in both Inside Out and The Good Dinosaur. But maybe the Skeleton Twins will be the sleeper hit they both so desperately need. After all, it is written and directed by relatively new talent Craig Johnson, his second film after his mumblecore debut with True Adolescence. And he must be doing something right, as Tybrell and Luke Wilson have also signed on to star. Or does their presence mean he's doing something wrong? I haven't really been exposed to a lot of mumblecore films. I did see Drinking Buddies on Demand because Jake Johnson was in it, but I didn't like it very much. However, I think The Skeleton Twins is a more mainstream version of mumblecore, and this, this I kind of like. Granted, it's a very slow burn and it's very low energy, and in fact I would not recommend you see The Skeleton Twins on a Friday or Saturday night. But as a matinee or a rental, I think you'd be very happy with the decision to see this movie. And that's largely thanks to the chemistry between Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig, who really do seem like siblings in the film. And I don't know how much of that is attributable to all the time they spent together on Saturday Night Live, but still, however they got there, it works. And while they start out the film uh, as estranged siblings, uh, the way it explores their relationship, the ups and downs that all siblings experience in real life, uh, rings very true. And I also liked how the film underscored that the sibling relationship is very important and can be tremendously supportive. And that's why you shouldn't just throw it away. It's worth fighting for. Uh, and I liked the way the siblings here were portrayed so much, it made me call my sister after the movie. Uh, but while Kristen Wiig is also very good, I think the real standout here is Bill Hader. He's so good in the film. And I, while I was watching it, I thought to myself, how wonderful that after all the success he, got, success he got out of playing Stefan on Saturday Night Live, a very campy, comedic gay character, uh, he was able to funnel all that experience into this role here, where he's able to deliver a very honest, real and touching, unflinching portrayal, um, very well-rounded portrayal of a gay man today, a, very, a, a modern gay man. And I thought that was a really great gift to give back to, um, you know, a type of person who's given him so much success in the comedic realm with Stefan. So that was a really nice aspect to the film. Uh, and again, as I said, slow burn, but still, there are enough really fantastic moments in the film, uh, funny or touching or sometimes both, and also uh, these really interesting reveals about the characters that are done in a very organic way. They just kind of sneak up on you, that it holds your attention despite being a slow burn and despite being low energy. So again, I, I would recommend seeing this, but just understand that, you know, it's going to be like you go yourself to upstate New York and stay with this uh, 
the, these, this brother and sister. It's going to be that exact same experience. It's realistic in that regard as well. But luckily for us, this brother and sister are pretty darn interesting. They're also really genuinely nice people. I mean, they're having their problems. They unintentionally uh, or accidentally hurt others, and sometimes intentionally. But, you know, that happens. That's, again, realistic. Uh, but I think underneath it all, the nice thing was that they are both really nice people. This is just stuff that happens in life, uh, which is why I think it makes it so easy to identify with. And it was just really refreshing to see some genuinely nice people portrayed on screen. They weren't narcissistic or uh, egotistical. I mean, I think maybe some people could make the argument that they were, but they didn't come across that way to me. They both seemed like really nice people. Uh, also, I think a shout out has to go to Luke Wilson, who also does a very good job in his supporting role. And I think um, the great thing about his character is that it showcases how sometimes good guys are their own worst enemy. Uh, and I also think credit goes to the writer-director Craig Johnson here. Uh, he doesn't really have a strong voice. You don't really feel his presence uh, when you're watching the movie, but somebody had to guide all these actors through this. Uh, and I know that films like this are largely uh, improvised, uh, and it doesn't come across that way. Sometimes it does, but this seemed, I mean, it would be hard for me to tell if this was scripted or improvised. So really nice work all around. Uh, I would definitely recommend you see this at some point. It's a really, it's a really touching film, especially if you have a sibling or, or a couple siblings. So that's my review of uh, The Skeleton Twins. If you've seen it, I hope you'll leave your own thoughts down below. Thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some more episodes right now.